control. Gaming. Five years can seem a long time for many, but for those of us who answer to a higher calling, who must make difficult decisions to ensure the will of Lord Chernobog is met, and that our collective can thrive and ascend to greatness, five years can seem like no time at all. I must utilize the strengths of each members of the Great Houses, whilst also keeping a watchful eye affixed on their transgressions. Rumors of debauchery, heretical thoughts, and weakness of character circulate this island as frequently as air circulates your lungs. As part of my duties, I must investigate these rumors and uncover those undesirable so they can be offered to Lord Chernobyl. Hi, priest! Dinner's ready! Coming, Mama! Just the gin towel. Haven't, haven't, haven't really got a, a cultist cloak, so. Uh. The Shrouded Isle was released for PC, Mac, and Nintendo Switch in August 2017 by Kit Fox Games. It's a resource management simulator that plays out like a single player board game. You are given five years to keep uh, Lord Chernobog appeased who is a sort of Lovecraftian old god, although the name comes from a deity in Slavic mythology. Each year is broken up into four seasons, with each season comprising three months. At the beginning of each season, you must pick an advisor from one member of each of the five influential families on the island. Each house has an assigned role within the community. The Kegney family burn books to ensure the community at large remains ignorant of knowledge that would turn them away from worshipping Lord Chernobog. The Yosefka family build monuments to inspire fervour. The Cadwells confiscate goods so villagers remain well disciplined. The Ephesons crack their whips so villagers remain penitent. And the Blackborns investigate heresy to encourage obedience. The advisor you pick for each house will have a virtue and a vice that can help and hinder not only the goals of their house, but also of other houses too. Uh, the goals of each house are represented as a progress bar beneath their names. If you're in the yellow and on or beyond the little marker, then you're fine. If you're beneath the marker in any given area, it will be coloured red and you need to get that fixed ASAP. If you don't get that house out of the red for two seasons in a row, the worship of Chernobog shatters and the game is over. So having picked your advisors, you now have three months to ensure everything is in order. At the start of each month, you can pick up to three advisors. Each advisor you pick will cause your reputation for their respective families to increase, while those not chosen will slightly decrease. Each of the appointed three houses for that month will do a little dice rolling in the background to determine how successful they were in their roles. Following that, You'll also see how the virtues and vices of that advisor impact things. How many advisors you choose will affect these numbers, so if you only picked one advisor that month, that house will have improved reputation gains and the impacts of virtues and vices will also be more severe. The virtues and vices won't be known to you at first. Some will have a vague indication which can also be obtained by picking that advisor for a task. But in order to get a clear picture, you are going to have to spend reputation on interrogating that advisor. Although you can do this a limited number of times for any family member at the start of each season. Virtues and vices are minor and major, with some being more or less valuable or painful depending on which category they fall under. Knowing who to bring along is important for keeping your progress bars in the yellow, but you also want to be mindful of who you want to sacrifice. That's right, at the end of each season, you will have to choose one of your advisors to sacrifice to Lord Chernobog. When you sacrifice an advisor, you will lose reputation with that family depending on a number of factors. If that advisor had a major vice, then you will lose uh, the minimum amount of reputation from them. If they had only a minor vice, or if they were afflicted by a condition at the time, 
and I will let you discover that mechanic for yourself, then you will suffer greater reputation losses. If a family's reputation drops enough to put them in open rebellion, you have to make sure they don't stay rebellious for two consecutive seasons, or else it's game over. You must improve your reputation with that family to pull them back out of rebellion. On top of all that, uh, Lord Chernobog will demand sacrifices of particular individuals based on their vice. I must admit I'm not sure what impact this has because you don't actually have to sacrifice who they have requested. I imagine if you ignore their demands too many times and it's game over, or perhaps it affects your luck in some way. What I do know is that these demands also come with greater demands on a particular stat, so ignorance, fervor, etc. The marker is raised on the progress bar, you see. And this will not end until you have sacrificed Chernobog's particular demand. And yeah, that's uh, about the basics of it. I haven't beaten the game yet, so I can't say I have uh, complete knowledge of its systems, but I have reached the final year, so I think I have at least a good idea. There are other mechanics that uh, get introduced throughout play, which I'll leave you to discover, or if you end up watching my incoming Let's Play of it, uh, then you'll discover them there instead. So, uh, on to the controller profile. Right, so uh, this is a uh, fresh save. Uh, this is one of the first screens that you'll see, um, and this is the start of a season where you pick your uh, advisors. So really, uh, basically all of the hotkeys that I've kind of set up for this um, are for this section of the game. Like, um, yeah, the user interface is uh, pretty all kind of closely knit for other parts, so there's not a lot of like moving your cursor about and stuff. Uh, now, this game, um, it will default to just like a keyboard or mouse profile when you launch it on Steam with uh, and you're playing on controller. And honestly, for the most part, that's absolutely fine. Like you can get by with just that, no problem at all. Um, there's no actual um, uh, key bindings or anything for this. Um, so I suspect, uh, I suspect if anything, like the best way to play it is probably on like a touch screen. Um, so if you've got like a Microsoft Surface or, um, well there's a Switch version, uh, so if the Switch version has touch capability then that's probably a good way to go. Um, and I was fine with it, I, I, just for kicks really, I added a bunch of other stuff, little quality of life thingy bobs. Uh, yeah, so, uh, what, I'll, what I'll just mention this first of all is, uh, so this is my profile, uh, I've got mouse bound to both thumbsticks. I will sometimes do this for like games that don't really have much in the way uh, of hotkeys or yeah. You know, if there's not a lot going on with the control setup then uh, if I'm playing a point click game then I might just rather than have like a modifier for the thumbstick um, you know I'll just have one thumbstick be of a not uh, I'd say of a lower sensitivity uh, so this one's under the U that one's under the E. <laughs> Down where it's wet. No, I'm not going to do that again, do I? <laughs> um, yeah, so, like, you, you know, if, if if you're fine with just sort of moving your cursor about from six, you've got, like, you, know, you can get to one end of the screen quicker, and then for more precise, you can use the other thumbstick. You know, it's choices, mate, choices. It's, it's up to you, man. Whatever you want. Whatever you want. So, um,. Yeah, so I, we'll we'll just get out of the way first of all. So let's look at selecting stuff because, like I say, you can just move over, did 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 and click the thing, and there you go. Uh, now, apologies, I didn't get my little controller overlay um, up for this. I forgot, just really realised, but it's fine. It's fine. Uh, this isn't a complicated game to get your head around. So. Um, so on this screen, you've got your yeah, the different estates, and you've got like uh, the cathedral, which is like your base of operations, um, and here I think uh, yeah, abandoned tower. Um, I've got it labelled as asylum. Spoilers, but yeah, it's just as you get later into the game. Like I can't do anything with it now, but later in, in the in the your playthrough, that will open up to you. Um, so let's look at these houses first of all now. You've got Epson on the top there, Blackbourne on the right, Cadwell on the bottom, Yosefka on the left. So, ooh, that's a nice little D-pad layout, wouldn't you say? Yeah, that's what I thought. 
you know, up, right, down, left, and uh, left again. But I still kind of went with it. So if I press up on D-pad, it'll go straight to that and highlight the Epson State. Down on D-pad, goes straight to the Cadwell. Right, Blackborn. Left is Sefka. Left again, Cagney Estate. So tap and left will alternate between those two. So how I've done this. Oh, and I'll, I'll just sort of point out, like, you know, you, you don't have to hold the button down, just tap, and then you just press the right trigger to select. Uh, so where I've done this is, so we look at the D-pad. Uh, so we've got, so Epson, that is a uh, cursor to position button. So you go over to that, and then on there, now it's already highlighted it, you know, you, you would move it over to normally, but um, it's just the bottom to position that I had left in. So you move it to where you want, right trigger, and now for this I've got remain in new position. Because if I do return to old position, look what happens, you know, my mouse is here, I press up on D-pad, boo, oh, oh, that's, no, that's no good to me, is it? I mean, you could hold it, hold and then right mouse, that works fine, but, um, what do I do? That doesn't feel good. That doesn't feel good. It kind of feels good. <laughs> Not good enough. So, um... Yeah, I'll just quickly create that. So, we want it on... Da -da, the main and new position. So now, when I tap up on the D-pad, it'll stay there. And it is just like... So, yeah, as though the game natively had input recognition for these, you know, to begin with. Like it's, yeah, you know, it, it functions as the way as you would select a menu item with a D-pad in any other game, more or less. Um, so that's how that works for Everson, Blackborn, Cadwell. That obviously they're, you know, um, if we go, oh, what am I doing? So if we went Blackborn, uh, yeah, it's already over there. You see, so that works same. Now for the left D-pad. It's where things get a little more complicated. So, uh, you can... Now, I've got cycle binding on. So normally, yeah, when you open it up, you'll just get this by default. Uh, and I've got cycle binding on by pressing... Uh, well, normally you press back. I'll, I'll, I'll show you in a second. I'll show you in a second. But yeah, so cycle binding on here. Got that turned on. And... Uh, if I, just to show you, I'll, I'll just use, because I, I did a little practice run of this, or I say practice run, forgot to hit fucking record on shadow play, so it's just me waffling and no visual stuff being recorded. Huh. Um, but yeah, what, what, I know, what I learned is that cycle binding doesn't work so well if you're doing like a long press input. It's it really just for regular presses, maybe quarter presses. Um, it's a learning experience, I'm, I'm learning as I do these as well. But just to show you, so how this works. So um, we're with. So this is what I've done for the left D-pad. Essentially, I'm just showing you right thumbstick here. Um, so if we go, so so normally when you, I so say you go into binding, and you'll be confronted with this screen, right? Um, why is that? Oh yeah, that's left on from before. That's why. So now, yeah, so we've got, uh, so yeah, by default, you'll, when you assign in something to a button for the first time, you'll just come straight to here. So from here, I do Y uh, to tug on multi-button on, move over to cursor, uh, and we shall put, uh, j just for some different, I don't know, so we'll put, I want the cursor to be there, okay. Remain in new position. Right, and now, without doing anything else, you just press, because I've already toggled the multi button, you just press A on the same icon again, and then we'll just say, that fountain's quite nice, let's fucking go over there. Uh, remain in new position. So when we come out, when I click the right thumbstick, uh, no. <laughs> Do you know what? It's something different every time. I think this is just Steam being Steam, i.e. being fucking buggy. Uh, right. Okay. Let's try it this way then. So, uh, yeah, it's a bit buggy. If that doesn't work for you, what I would do is do... Oh, hang on. I know why it didn't fucking work for me. I'm a twat. Oh, 
absolute dickhead. Absolute dickhead. But we're in a new position. And then Ah, uh, sorry, fountain. I got fucking things in the way. Over here, over, over here. Let's this little bit of blackness over here. Right. Oh, this is going well, isn't it? <laughs> right, main new position. Right now, what I forgot to do is from here, press back on the uh, on your controller, and then you go to cycle binding. Switch that on. And now, yeah, you see, you see. So right click spring, right click. Darkness, right click spring, right click darkness. And that's what we've got going on here with the left E pad. Bit of a long window way of fucking explaining it, but there you go. Uh, right, I am just going to quickly, because all I did, faster care, so I, I just did this to uh, point out. I'll forget if I don't fucking do this now. Uh, empty that, so slower cursor. Uh, and just empty that so it does nothing. That's just so it's easier to see here, that faster cursor, slower cursor. Um, yeah, that's that's how that works. Um, so that also, I've got D-pad, you can cycle between these two, like, like say, base operations and the asylum thingy middle of. Um, so, oh, I've got a letter, so I want to read that. So, yeah, and the, these letters are like, uh, um, like banner saga, a little events where you've got a choice, a choice uh, which will have consequences and stuff like that. Uh, I don't really care, so whatever. House kick any approval, minus 10. House Everson approval, plus 10. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, like, they're, they're, those, they can throw you a bone, they can uh, put you in a worse predicament. It doesn't always give you all the information up, up front, but like generally if one family is saying, do this, and you're like, no, I want to do this because it will inspire discipline or whatever. Then you'll get the discipline, but then you might find that you've also lost rep with that family. So it gives you the clues, yeah. Yeah, the clues are there, it just doesn't always explicitly state what effect it's going to have. Uh, yeah, so left bumper does that. Um, also, I've got a thing, so if I hold left trigger and press the D pad, then you get the reputation at the bottom. Uh, just with the same layout as uh, if you were selecting this normally. Um, I don't really suspect many people would use that if anyone uses this controller profile at all. Because um, uh, I've also got right bumper to just cycle through them, and that's easier to remember. Um, I just sort of if you're from if you're looking at this screen and you've got that kind of D-pad like visual in front of you, then you might just want to. Right, uh, oh, Yosefka, left to do. There you go. Oh, Kegeni, left again. There you go. Uh, Efferson, what's their rep like? Down D pad. There you go. Oh, no, sorry, that's Cadwell. Uh, up on D pad. <laughs> Efferson. Yeah, so that, that that's a thing. And, and that works just the same way as uh, when we move the cursors over to these, it just now moves it down to here. Uh, the same with this right bumper. Um, so. I think, oh yes, so now uh, we have got the face buttons. So let's say I want to look at the Kegney estate. So uh, I already did it, but so left D pad, left again, right trigger, select. So now you would, on this screen, you can uh, begin inquiries to find out uh, virtues or vices about uh, people in this family. Uh, and you can appoint one of them as an advisor. Uh, I can't confine anyone yet because I'm not at that point on this save uh, or on this on this particular game. Um, but you will get another option. Uh, this will open up to you as you play, and it will, you know, I've set it up so it behaves exactly the same as these two, uh, well, three other buttons. So begin inquiry. So normally, you know, you'd be like, if I hadn't done this setup, I would be like, right, begin inquiry. I want to go here. Uh, oh, actually, I've changed my mind. Let's go. Uh, there. Oh no, I changed my mind again. Let's go, Miko. Uh, over here. Yeah. So um. Yeah. So what I've done is I've done. So it's going. You know, say your mouse is over here. And be like, right. Okay. Um. This inquiry season. Boo. Bam. Right there. You see. You see. So this works a little bit differently because, as you notice, the cursor isn't staying on the begin inquiry button. It's just uh, it's going back to where it was before. So what I've done 
if you have a look here, is... Now, what I'm about to show you, you won't necessarily have to do it for every game. I like, I guess it's just a different way that inputs, uh, input recognition is worked out from one game to another. But I do find that most games have to do this. Uh, you, you have to do this in order for it to register properly. So, first of all, we've got, we've got two regular presses. Uh, we've got um, move, moving the cursor to the position, so what we saw earlier. Um, and I've put a delay on it. So, normally it'll be this, but I've put a delay of, I guess it's one, two, so a two unit delay, whatever the measurement of this bar is. Uh, in fact, actually, I think when you hover over it, it will... Yeah, alright, so it's in seconds by like that. So the maximum is... Oh, I don't fucking know. Um, and then you've got regular press. Uh, the second regular press is to click the left mouse button. Now that one has a fire start delay. So it won't... So at point of activation, nothing happens. Tick, something happens. So you can probably see what... You can probably work it out what I'm doing here. So essentially, it's... Right, um... You press a button, like boom, activation go. Then it's like tick, and when it gets to that tick, that first tick, this left one, this left mouse button will fire off. Boom. And then when it gets to from that tick to this tick, the mouse cursor will revert back to its previous position. So essentially, what this is doing is it's just given the game a window to recognise that um, there's also yeah you know, there's also going to be a mouse click. We want to make sure it's at the new position rather than the old position. And yeah, and then how that plays out, as you've seen, is so press Y, boom, click. So press Y, click, press click. You see, ah, oh, I can't do it. <laughs> but yeah, so essentially, when I press Y, it's the cursor is going. You know, it's going to instantly teleport to here. It's going to wait, and then it's going to click, and then it's going to wait again, and then it's going to go back to the default position. All happens so quickly, doesn't it? Um, same with the point advisor. Oh no, that's the wrong button. Twat. Um, same with the point advisor. So you can do that. Boom. Actually, no, I want it to be. Actually, no, I want it to be. Actually, no, I want it to be. You see? You see? Um, rename villager is not on the B button. Because you'd be feeling the I've got begin inquiries as Y and then change advisor as A. You would think confine would be X, which it is, and then rename would be B, which it isn't. Simply because I've got B working the same as the start button, where it will you'll go back. So press B. Because B is you, you pretty much universally the go back button um, for menu UI in game. So I want to keep that consistent. But I've, I've just done the same thing with the back button. You can do that. You can rename. Da -da -da. You know, I'm not going to uh, can't bothered with <laughs> the keyboards out of reach. Um, but yeah, so you've got that. Like I say, th these are all, all catered for. Um, like I say, uh, you could just change it so rename villager is B as well if you wanted to. Um, I follow my D pad rule, uh, if, if you're not familiar what that is. Um, when there's like say numbered hotkeys assigned to a D-pad, I start at 12 o'clock and go clockwise. So up on the D-pad is one, right on the D-pad is two, down on D-pad is three, etc. Um, seeing as beginning inquiry is kind of like the sort of default menu item, I guess. Um, yeah, I, I've kind of made that as like that's a 12 o'clock position, and then just go dirt right down. You know, you get it, you get it, you get it, you get it. I hope you do. Because <laughs> I'm doing a shit job explaining it. But yeah, just something to consider. Uh, but I do believe that is everything to show you. Um, yeah, so, so yeah, now I've already gone through that. Cycle of state rep, that is the stuff at the bottom, so you can see what the reputation is. D pad uh, is this good stuff. Left trigger and D pad. We'll do the reputation in the same layout. Um, left bumper will cycle between those two at the top. And uh, yeah, that is uh, that's about it. So um, 
yeah, I, I don't play enough of these sorts of games. Um, yeah, I guess he's kind of like kind of board gamey. I mean, I, I I really like board games. I haven't been playing enough of those lately. You know, lockdown being a, an obvious uh, reason for that. Um, but like the, these kind of single player board game style video games, uh, you know, there are, there are some intriguing ones out there. I, I played a little bit of Tharsis, um, which is, uh, uh, that was pretty cool. I never got particularly far on it. Um, very RNG heavy, I remember that being. But, um, you know, lots of actual dice rolling in that game. Um, but yeah, I've, I've had this for oh, years now, probably. I'm sure I just got it on like a, a bundle or a sale or something at some point. And yeah, I've really gotten into it. It's um, yeah, it's not a super complex game. Um, you know, I, I've not beaten it myself yet. However, my second, you know, run, I did get to the final year. So maybe I got lucky. You know, maybe it's quite an easy game to figure out. But it, it's fun. Uh, you know, I, I do really like it. Um, the theme is really strong. Yeah, you know, I love uh, the art style. The uh, you know, the pictures and do hair. Uh, you know the portraits of the characters. Uh, I love the names. Like uh, I, I don't know if these are just kind of. Uh, yeah, I mean I suppose there's a lot of Eastern European names in here, aren't there? Um, yeah, I, I I don't know how exactly that fits with the whole Lovecraftian vibe, but just kind of like these old estates with these, uh, you know, sort of older uh, Eastern European names. Just uh, it, it all fits so well, and the music. Oh, the music. It's oh, it, it's yeah. There's a lot that I love about this game. Uh, and yeah, so if, if if you if you feel like something a little bit different, um, maybe you've you've heard of this and you were considering it but never took the plunge. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a it's a fun game, fun fun game to uh, to get stuck into. And um, but yeah, uh, I think that is it. I think I'm now about to go into rambling mode again. So uh, that must be time to end the video. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching, and oh yeah, and uh, like I say, this profile will be, uh, there'll be a direct link in the video description, uh, you'll be able to find it on the community uh, section of uh, the controller layouts, <laughs> I forgot what it's called, in Steam, in Steam where you pick your controller layout, you, you should be able to find it in the community section there as well. Uh, but yeah, thanks for tuning in, and uh, until next time, oh, and by the way, there I, I did mention it at the start. Uh, there will be a let's play of this starting. Um, it might even come out the same uh, on the same day as this one, or it may be yeah. It'll it'll be some point this week anyway. So yeah, have a have a look out for that if you're intrigued. And uh, yeah, take it easy. Bye. That is uh, completely untrue. If you look at what we're doing, we're bringing forward a new legislative programme on crime, on hospitals, and making sure that we have these...